Armenia, a country where people come to interact with a peace-loving, virtuous, and creative historic nation to consult the masterpieces of medieval manuscripts with reverence, where the apostles Thaddeus and Bartholomew had passed through, and to receive Holy Communion through divine liturgy, and of course, to see the biblical Mount Ararat. The Chaplain General of the Canadian Armed Forces, Major General Guy Chapdelin's visit to Armenia begins in the evening of February 23, 2019. The Reverend Father Chapdelin is welcomed at the airport by spiritual brothers from the Armenian Apostolic Church. His Grace, Bishop Apgar Hovagimian, Primate of the Armenian Diocese of Canada, and His Grace, Bishop Vertanes Abrahamian, Head Chaplain of the Armenian Armed Forces. His invitation enables Chaplain General Chapdelin to spend the winter's final days in Armenia. Sunday begins in Holy Echmiadzin at the Monastery of St. Gaene. Habitually, on this day, monasteries and churches are crowded. Sunday is the day to celebrate divine liturgy. The faithful gather to pray, to listen to the spiritual thought of the day, and to receive the blessings of His Holiness Karakin II, Supreme Patriarch and Catholicus of all Armenians. Following the Divine Liturgy, His Holiness Karakin II, Supreme Patriarch and Catholicus of all Armenians, hosts Chaplain General Chapdelin, accompanied by Bishops Hovagimian and Abrahamian, and Father Zare. His Holiness highly appreciates the structured benevolent relations between the chaplaincy services of the Armenian and Canadian Armed Forces. I'm, uh, I'm very uh, honored to be uh, present in Armenia. Uh, I had uh, a friend, Armenian friend, and I have heard a lot about Armenia. But to be here, to be present uh, on the ground of Armenia is very special to me. And also the relationship that we develop between the Armenian church uh, in Canada. Uh, for me, they are dear to me. And uh, it's why I'm so pleased to be here and meet also the Catholicos uh, today. The next designated stop is the Diocese of Arakatsotin. In Oshagan, the Canadian and Armenian spiritual brothers are welcomed by His Grace Bishop Magardich Broshian, Primate of the Arakatsotin Diocese. There are 11 dioceses in Armenia and Artsakh, and another 30 dioceses in the rest of the world. The Diocese of Arakatsotin was founded in 1996. Its cathedral is the St. Mashtots Church, one of the principal national shrines of the Armenians. According to legend, Noah and his family, while descending from Mount Ararat, first saw this site, void of water, at which time they exclaimed, Osh Agan, blessed are our eyes. The remains of Saint Mestrop Mashtots, the author of the Armenian alphabet, are laid to rest here. The altar curtain of the church is notable in that it is comprised of the tricolor flag of Armenia. This flag curtain is unique. The wall of the main entrance is decorated with a fresco that depicts the Battle of Avarair, the historical battle defending the Christian faith of the Armenians. Within the churchyard, there are life-sized letter statues and the monument of Mr. Mashtots. Visitors to this unique place enjoy taking pictures of the statue of the letter of their names. This is the uh, G, G, which is the third letter of our alphabet. Goes I, Pen, Kim. And this is E.
Following Oshagan is the excursion to Salmosavank. The word Salmos signifies spiritual song. The 13th century monastic complex has magnificent acoustics. According to legend, St. Gregory the Illuminator built the first shrine here in the 4th century, where he gathered clergymen to teach them spiritual songs. It is unimaginable to come to Salmo Savank and not be overwhelmed by the beauty of the Kasach River Canyon. Its highlands resemble graduated platforms inviting anyone to sit and to admire the monastery's location and magnificence, as well as to enjoy its privacy and meditate. <laughs> The day ends in Yerevan, at the studio of famous artist Mais Bakhitarian. Tourists from all over the world come here often to visit. This is a unique place where one can enjoy modern Armenian art and interact with the creator. The artist shares the story of the conception of his paintings, all the while recalling every detail and feeling he experienced at the time. Of particular interest is the painting of the Last Supper, produced using diverse techniques. Jesus and the Apostles are portrayed in an unusually unique manner, bizarre outfits, and holding musical instruments that can be played only after receiving the grace of the Holy Spirit. Then the light is turned off, and once again the host enters with his flaming chanach. Hospitality is a mandatory tradition in any Armenian family. The second official meeting of the Canadian Major General takes place at the Ministry of Defence. Chaplain General Chaplin, Bishops Bertanes and Apgar, and Father Zare are greeted by Mr. David Tonoyan. The minister also highly appreciates the collaboration between the chaplaincy services of the two countries. The Chaplain General also visited the Homeland Defenders Rehabilitation Center. Equipped with modern technologies, the center was established with the cooperative efforts of the Yerevan State Medical University and Armenia's Ministry of Defense, as well as the support of the country's government and funds donated by both philanthropists and individuals. Wounded Homeland Security personnel are treated mostly by skilled young professionals. Chaplain General Chaplin greets each and every soldier inquires about their adventure, and proceeds wishing everyone well and a speedy recovery. What I see is uh, um, the finest place that I have seen for uh, rehabilitation of soldiers, and uh, it's so important to take care of the soldiers when they are injured. And uh, what I see is uh, the best of the best uh, to, uh, to care for the wounded and the injured, and it's uh, it's something that we have experienced when we had soldiers in uh, in Afghanistan, and still we we have people uh, in rehabilitation after have been wounded. But uh, what I see, it's uh, a lot of um, interest from the state to take care of the of the soldiers. That's uh, that's great. The next stop is the peacekeeping brigade. The officers welcome the visiting dignitaries. Commander Ardak Donoyan presents the Armenian peacekeepers' activities from 2003 to the present day. They have served and continue to serve in Kosovo, Afghanistan, Iraq, Syria, and elsewhere. Chaplain General Chaplin indicates that Canada is one of the most peaceful and peace-loving countries highly appreciating humanity's right to live in peace. I'm very pleased to be with you today and, uh, and part of uh, this visit uh, to Armenia. Uh, I have friends, Armenian friends in Canada, but uh, to be here it's very special to discover the culture and also I believe that the Armenians and Canadians, we, uh, we have some occasions to, uh, to work together. 
At the end of the event, the clergymen present blessed cross badges to the officers, in similar arrangement to the cross of the chaplaincy service of the Armenian Armed Forces. Next is a place where soldiers are trained and where they receive their first rank as officers, Vaskan Sarkisian Military Academy. The visiting dignitaries are welcomed and guided to the hall where a concert dedicated for the celebration of Vartanans is set to begin. In the liturgical calendar of the Armenian Apostolic Church, this holiday is celebrated in memory of Commander Vartan Mamigonian and his soldiers who fought in the 5th century for the nation's freedom of religion and Christian faith. Spiritual and patriotic songs are played. Chaplain General Chapdelin and Bishop Vertanes start the day of February 26th at the Vache and Tamar Manukyan Repository of Manuscripts in the Mother See of Holy Echmiadzin. They meet with the chaplains serving in the Armenian Armed Forces. Reverend Chapdelin presents the structure and the specific duties of the Royal Canadian Chaplaincy Service. Unlike Armenia, Canadian chaplains can receive military rank. There are 250 chaplains of various religions and ethnic backgrounds serving in an army of 100,000 to respond to the spiritual needs of soldiers in a multicultural Canada. Following the meeting with the Armenian chaplains, the head chaplains travel to Monte Melkonian Military College in Dirijan. This public educational institution provides a tuition-free Armenian high school program to grade 9 graduate students. I became military, I was 17 years old, I was looking for a summer job. I've been uh, 40 years in uniform until now. And I'm very pleased to see young people looking for military career in the future. And to serve a country is uh, something very important. During a tour of the college, the visiting dignitaries stop in front of the map of Greater Armenia. This is the largest and most powerful Armenia that has ever existed, from sea to sea. From the college, Chaplain General Chapdelin and Bishop Vertanes visit Hagartsin Monastery, located in the region of Tavush. The complex was built between the 11th and 13th centuries and is entirely surrounded by forest. On their way back, they stop at Sevanavank, founded in 305 AD on the Sevan Peninsula, located in the Kerarkonik region of the Armenian Republic. Kerart Monastery in Kotaik province is among the most important sites of Christian Armenia. To the Canadian visitor making an effort to speak Armenian, the weather here probably reminded him of his homeland. <laughs> the abbot and clergymen of the monastery greet the visitors, accompany them to the church, and present them with the monastery's rich history. Kerartavank is also called Airivank, meaning the monastery of the cave as it was actually dug into the rock in the 4th century. The name commonly used for the monastery today, Kerart, or more fully Kerartavank, meaning the monastery of the spear, originates from the spear which had pierced Jesus on the cross and brought to Armenia by the Apostle Thaddeus, one of the first disseminators of Christianity in Armenia. Today, 
The spear is preserved at the mother seat of Holy Echmiadzin. Kegart's architecture is unique. It is difficult to imagine how people created a two-story church by digging a cave. It is said that it is possible only by having great faith and the Lord's blessing. It is also said that one receives the greatest energy by standing exactly under the dome. The passageways between the first and second floors provide the purest sound at the monastery. church of the monastery complex, Canadian and Armenian head chaplains exchange stoles that form part of an ecclesiastical attire. These symbolic gifts will remind Chaplain General Chapdelin about the five days spent in Armenia and the new relationships established in this land. Prior to leaving the monastery, they make another stop. There is a cold running spring inside the main church. It has been traditionally conveyed that the spring water in a sanctuary has healing powers. People believe in the healing powers of the water and come here to drink and to get well. The monastery of Kerart is listed as a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Following Kerart, of course, the next excursion is to Garni. It is the only pre-Christian pagan temple preserved in Armenia. According to Moses Khorenazi, its history is derived from Keram, the great-grandson of Haig the Great. The temple was named Garni after the grandson of Keram, whose name was Karnik. It is presumed that this temple was dedicated to the sun god Arek Mihar. The temple has been renovated several times over the centuries due to destruction from earthquakes and wars. The four-column structure is constructed in Hellenistic style. Nine tall steps high, right in the center of the platform, there is a prayer hall. Some experts associate it with Roman monuments. From Gotaik back to Yerevan, the honorable visiting dignitaries were welcomed at the Madenataran. The Madenataran, which is located at the very heart of Yerevan, is named after Mesrop Mashtots, the author of the Armenian alphabet. It is one of the richest centers in the world for study and preservation of ancient manuscripts and documents. There are approximately 23,000 handwritten manuscripts and fragments, and over 300,000 archival documents preserved here. Chaplain General Chapdelin is guided to the central hall, where the largest and the tiniest Bibles, the oldest manuscript, the first printed Armenian book, medieval medical books, and prayer books with unique illustrations and covers are carefully preserved and maintained. Immediately in the next hall, there is an exhibition dedicated to La Francophonie. Here, Chaplain General Chapdelin was also given a tour of the exhibits. One can spend days in the Madena Taran, as each of its manuscripts has a great history of its own. However, the time has come to visit Zizer Nagapert. Bishop Vertanes, together with Reverend Chapdelin, first visit the Museum of the Armenian Genocide, founded in 1995. Everything relating to the Armenian Genocide, well established and recognized in history, with documentary evidence, is kept and displayed here. The visit begins in the semicircular hall with a genocide map. A section of the hall is dedicated to reactions of the international communities. Another section is dedicated to intellectuals who perished during the genocide. The next stop is about the children and orphanages built in different countries and in a final section, audiovisual documentaries are displayed. The visit ends in the commemorative hall. Exiting the museum, one would be standing immediately on the path to the memorial. To the right, with a height of approximately 40 meters, stands the monument of the rebirth of Armenia. At the center, with a 30 meter diameter, is the eternal flame. 12, 44 meter high, arrow-shaped giant basalt pillars surround the entire monument, symbolizing the survival and spiritual rebirth 
of the Armenian people. The memorial complex of the Armenian Genocide is not only the pilgrimage site of the whole Armenian nation, but also the mandatory stop for almost every person visiting Armenia where one bows, brings flowers, meditates and prays. <laughs> After the Genocide Memorial, the Chaplain General desired to visit the Blue Mosque. However, the main sanctuary was closed due to renovations. During his visit to Armenia, Reverend Chaplain, together with Bishops Apgar and Vertanes and Father Zare, traveled to the region of Vayatsur, first to the border village of Khachik. This village is located in the mountains 1,860 meters above sea level. The elders say that there is an inscription on one of the stones found in the village which reads, I founded this village and named it after myself. Remember our commanderite Khachik. In the barracks, the visiting dignitaries are greeted by the primate of the Diocese of Vayotsur, his eminence Archbishop Abraham Magartichyan, the military commander, and of course, the soldiers. Bishop Vertanes greets the soldiers, introduces the visiting dignitaries, and everyone enters the building. Here, one of the recruits makes a welcome speech. I want to thank you for making such a long trip from hundreds of kilometers away to meet with us and to share your heartfelt feelings. We would like to thank the Armenian Diocese of Canada and the students of St. Sahag, St. Mesrop Armenian School who wrote us these letters. I joined the military out of a sense of patriotism to serve the fatherland. I thought it was impossible to be more patriotic than I already was. However, when we read the letters, I felt that there was still room to intensify my patriotism. I know that these children will one day follow in our footsteps. The soldier is from Charensavan. His home is 180 kilometers away. Arsen will spend two years in his new home in Khachik. The blessing ceremony of his new home will be held immediately following his very emotional speech. The beginnings of the home blessing custom comes from the days of the apostles of Jesus going from house to house to deliver the message of Christ's birth and then his resurrection. Today, the priests visit homes, delivering the good news and blessing their bread, water and salt. At the end, a group picture and a visit to Noravank. The history of this monastery, founded eight centuries ago, is presented in the adjacent museum. Everything related to Noravank is carefully preserved here, from locally discovered household items to plant specimens and church relics. A separate display is dedicated to Armenian dyes, the most prominent of which is the worm red, Bortan Garmir, that the Armenians obtained from red worms. In general, the red color prevails in Noravank. It is more noticeable during the seasons without snow. The monastery is built in between red rocks. Looking carefully, one can see the mountain goats hopping around, which are listed in the Red Book of Armenia. Many famous individuals of medieval Armenia lived and composed in Noravank. There is no one who comes to Armenia and does not want to visit Noravank to climb up the stairs of a two-story church as if to be closer to God. The first thing is the people that I met. Uh, people is the most important uh, of my trip, uh, like Bishop uh, Ventana uh, and all the other people that I met, uh, Armenians in general, uh, very generous, very hospitable. And uh, I will never uh, forget uh, the people that I met here. It started when I met with Father Zarek uh, from Toronto. Uh, I was at the Canadian Council of Churches and I was giving my first speech as Chaplain General in 2015. And he came to see me after and he said, uh, I'm from Armenia and I know the bishop, uh, Bishop Vertanes. And uh, he said, 
we would like to to collaborate with you and uh, the chaplaincy uh, from Canada. And I said, of course, I will be happy. A farewell photo with the clergymen of Noravank and Archbishop Abraham, and then moving on to Khorvirap. But meanwhile, a quick stop at a winery to come all the way to Vayotsor, the community of Arani, and not see the wine production and to not taste a local wine would be, as people say, a crime. One should begin with white, as it has the sweetest taste. Armenians say that the global history of wine started in Armenia, since it was Noah himself who planted the first vine here after the flood. On a clear day, right from the spot, within the grounds of Khorvirap Monastery, one could perhaps see or envision the expedition of Noah. According to legend, the forefather of the Armenian faith, St. Gregory the Illuminator, was imprisoned for 13 years in the pit where convicts usually were imprisoned. The sister of the king, who was responsible for throwing Gregory into the pit, helped him to survive and eventually he was liberated when King Tirdatis III converted to Christianity and proclaimed Christianity as the state religion of the Armenian kingdom. It happened 1,718 years ago in 301 AD. And thus, it is exactly from this monastery that first began Christianity as the country's newly accepted religious path. It is not accidental that both bishops Apkar and Vertanes decided to end the Canadian Chaplain General's visit to Armenia at this place, considering it is the second spiritual reunion of the head chaplains of two countries aiming to strengthen relations between Christian brothers. Our visit to Canada was organized with the facilitation of the primate and the vicar of the Canadian Armenian Diocese. As Christian brothers, we also offer our love and respect. After we expressed our appreciations, of course, we invited the Chaplain General of the Canadian Armed Forces to Armenia, and this visit became a reality with the immediate support of the primate and the vicar. Today, we are happy to acknowledge that the Reverend Father Chapdelain during his visit to Armenia, had an opportunity to witness that we also have chaplains and their mission is similar to those chaplains in Canada, to convey love to soldiers and to proclaim the message of Christianity and loving peace. In these days, and as always, the prayer for peace is most uttered in the Armenian churches. Armenian clergymen and the Canadian visitors ask the Almighty to keep people's souls and the world safe as these are the most precious of all. In general, anointed clergy during the liturgy turn to the faithful and proclaim the message of peace by saying, peace be with you all. I don't believe that there is any anointed clergy who is not at peace within. We preach the same to our service members. Our nation has always been a peace-loving one, has always fought for peace and has had many allies. History also indicates the loss of allies. The only ally that the Armenian people has never lost is our Lord God himself. When our people ask, God provides peace and it reigns over all. Military, they are servant of peace. We have to, this is our, uh, the main goal. Uh, we are not doing war for war, but we are trying to find peace. Of course, the war is, is the last resort, and it's maybe not the answer. Uh, dialogue is more important to try to find solution without uh, taking weapons, because we know as military people uh, the effect of wars, uh, not only on the population, but on, on the, the soldiers. I've seen so much uh, impact on the soldiers. Uh, physical wounds, but also uh, spiritual wounds, uh, um, spiritual wounds, and we talk more and more about moral injuries. Um, but for me, peace is uh, is something. Uh, I feel that I am a servant of peace, and I have to work for peace to be an artisan of peace where I am. And uh, in this country. Uh, of course, it's different in Canada because Canada is so peaceful country. We have no worry about our borders. But um, I hope that one day we'll f 
Armenia will find peace. Peace is a very important factor in general, especially for those countries which have been through and have experienced war. They value peace even more and know it's important. Peace, be it in the life of a person or a nation, can only exist with God. Christ himself says, I am the peace and the life. The spreading of spiritual values creates an atmosphere of peace in society, in the family, as well as within the military apparatus. For this reason, the chaplaincy service has been created within our armed forces, as well as those of various other countries, where soldiers who have witnessed combat or bloodshed, or encountered any difficulties, can have the support of clergy which is able to convey a sense of peace. And of course, through such visits, we have a great deal to learn from each other. And so, with love and prayers, the Armenian clergy bid farewell to Chaplain General of the Canadian Armed Forces, Major General Guy Chaplin. Visiting Armenia, a country where life is filled with faith, struggle for peace, and where people do all that is possible for love and light to reign.